yes sir i think all join we can continue now okay thanks let me start then Hello everyone. So am I audible? Everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks. So my name is Amit and I'll be presenting the session today um, as a little brief about my introduction. So I have been working into networking for more than 15 years where I worked with most of the uh, tier one service providers like Airtel, Tata and some of the global providers as well. And uh, for Viptela SD WAN, I've been working for more than five years. I have worked ranging uh, from smaller networks, uh, roughly six, seven sites, to clients having 2,000 sites. So I have worked on uh, Viptela V edges, Cisco C ISR or C CSR routers, and uh, uh, OEM, uh, open source devices as well. And uh, this is a very brief about myself. Okay. So Today, um, we are going now, we are going to talk about SD-WAN, which is the keyword, which is the buzzword these days, uh, SD-WAN, Software Defined WAN. So, Software Defined a Wide Area Network. So, before we uh, go ahead, so may, may I ask for a, a, a quick, a brief introduction uh, for everyone? Yes, yes. Uh, my name is Pradipta Sanyasi. Um, Okay. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, Pradeep, I can hear you. Please uh, go okay, ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Pradeep Sanyasi. Currently, I'm working with at, uh, Tata Communication uh, as, okay. an Optus, uh, as an Optus project, as a, a network Good. engineer. Uh, I have a uh, total six years of experience in uh, um, networking and relevant is three years. From last three years, I've been working on uh, routers and switches. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. My past organization was Reliance Geo Infocom Limited mm, okay. um, as a network engineer uh, where I was performed uh, as a uh, NOC support in my uh, area in Kolkata location. So okay. actually, uh, basically my responsibility was to take care of uh, enterprises and uh, I am having, I was having 400 enterprise customers along with mm -hmm. the, uh, along with the uh, in order size as well. So my mm -hmm. work was there that, uh, to take care of planned event and execution part if any mm -hmm. network changes were there. So I have it, uh, this knowledge on Cisco ASR series routers and switches. Mm -hmm. And uh, even uh, I had mm -hmm. worked with uh, Nokia in uh, ESS32 mm -hmm. for uh, as a core and collector ring. Uh, okay. Presently, my um, I am I have done CCNP from Batul sir. And I am mm -hmm. upgrading myself uh, into SD WAN and uh, firewall things. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thanks, Rajita. Maybe next, Hemraj. Okay, Amit, uh, this uh -huh. is Jay Pandian. Uh, yep, go ahead, please. Pradeep, Pradeep, da, Pradeep da has completed a mini interview. <laughs> and, yes, good. Uh, and this is Jay Pandian. I'm from uh, working in Bath Airtel, Chennai, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the NOC, Centralist mm -hmm. NOC. Okay, good. This is about myself. I'm, I'm very much new to this SD WAN technology. Mm -hmm. So, so far, I'm mm -hmm. handling the SEN uh, part, SEN service deliveries for B2B customers. Okay, this good. This is about myself. Yeah, thanks, Jay Pandian. So, Arvind? Arun? <coughs> Arsh. Yeah, Amit. I went the side. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. So, uh, like presently, I'm uh, working as a network lead uh, in mm -hmm. uh, Synopsys, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm having uh, ten years experience uh, mm -hmm. in the network domain. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, earlier, I provided support to uh, like uh, Wipro and uh, IBM. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Arvind. Yeah. Okay. We next Harsh. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, my name morning. is Harshmar. I have a four-year experience in uh, Accenture and Bharat Theater project now as an incident management analyst. Now I'm mm -hmm. currently working in a Hilton project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Harsh. Paris. Hello. Yes, Paris. We can hear you. Yes. Actually, right now I am working as a back office transmission engineer and my current domain is mainly optical fiber communication microwave communication okay. and somewhere we are you know we are uh, working on the ip part it means for mm -hmm. uh, just uh, uh, only for routing plus switching and uh, actually okay. my total experience is uh, 12 point Mm -hmm. I am here and right now I am working in Ericsson. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and uh, right now my client is Malaysia. Okay. Malaysia. Okay. Thanks, Paris. Maybe Roshan. Hi, Amit. Good morning. Yes. Hello, Roshan. Uh, this is Roshan, and uh, currently I am working in LTI. Uh, mm -hmm. That's um, like uh, NNT Infotech, and my current project is uh, Azure Finite, where like my responsibility is to deploy the DCRNG network, like mm -hmm. complete infrastructure deployment, mm -hmm. and also we are deploying the uh, CDN sites for cover clients, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I am working as a technical lead over here from last uh, two years, mm -hmm. and okay. I have total experience of around uh, nine years okay. in network profile. Okay, yeah. good. Thanks, Roshan. Sachin? Yeah, hello. Well, uh, Sachin, this side, currently I'm working with Orange Business Services as a technical consultant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are working on the most of the projects we are hanging over the wireless. And now we are moving to learn SD-WAN. So that's why I'm here. Total okay. equipment I'm having 10 around. Okay. And profile I'm having routing, switching, firewall, and wireless. Okay. Thanks, Sachin. Yeah. Shatakshi? Hi, Amit. I'm Chatakshi. I have uh, 10 years of experience into networks. Currently okay. working as a cloud networks lead with Infosys. And okay. uh, prior to this, I worked with HCL, Accenture, and Genpact. Okay. And okay. Uh, we basically manage the entire network, uh, the cloud networks. Okay. Good. Thanks, Chatakshi. Shebi? Yeah, hi. So, myself is Shebi Nathan. I'm working in NTP and having total experience of seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Shabi. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I think we are done with everyone. So, again, uh, welcome to networking. So, I'll be starting this session today. And uh, in case anyone you have any query, you can post on chat, or even if you want, you can interrupt and ask. Feel free to ask anything related to SGVAN or how how networking is related with SGVAN, how things are related. I'll try to cover uh, most of the things uh, which I am aware of, which I think would be helpful for you to understand to go deeper into SGVAN. Okay, so I'll be covering with very basics about why we need SGVAN, what is SGVAN, how it's different from legacy networking. And I'll try to compare as much possible with the legacy networking, like how things are going on in legacy networking and how they are now in SD-WAN and how they are better than the legacy networkings and what are the pros and cons, I would say, uh, while moving into SD-WAN, okay? I see a few more people joined. Uh, thanks everyone for joining, okay? So I'll be uh, sharing my screen uh, now. Okay, so I'm assuming uh, everyone can see my screen. So welcome to SD-WAN training. Um, 
So Viptela SD WAN is one of the flavor of the SD WAN. So SD WAN is software defined wide area network. So meaning we are applying software sort of things across network is what when is so starting from your user machine in your office let's say when you are sitting in your office uh, you are connected to your pc that pc would somehow be connected to some sort of switches and then it would go across the van router to the other sites let's say if you are sitting in x location let's say you are sitting in delhi and you need to connect to one of your colleague uh, peer or anyone sitting in london so your pc and users pc in london they both are communicating across the van routers so somewhere at the network boundary you would see van router so whatever happens across the van router the one van router in delhi to the van router in london right so whatever is happening across delhi to london on that communication cloud so that is something we will be talking about throughout the SD WAN course. So it's more 90%, I would say, across the WAN into wide area network. Wide area network is basically we are catering the high, large area for sort of using the communication medium, be it fiber, be it cop. defined wide area network we have similarly sd lan software defined local area network so sd lan is basically for things which are around the lan network only when i say lan lan is your local pc your printer your switches anything in your office whatever is there in your office let's say you are sitting in your office in delhi whatever is there in your locally into your office that would be considered as across the LAN, like access points or wireless devices, your firewalls or your DNA center, eyes. So all sort of LAN managing things, those would be covered under software defined LAN. So a RAN or LAN network using software technologies. Although in, in the existing legacy networking as well, across WAN and LAN, although we already have software things there already, but with SD WAN, what's happening is we are increasing the exposure of the software into networks. So we will try, we will see how we have optimized, how researchers or Cisco or different vendors, how they have optimized the existing WAN or LAN network to use softwares. Any question so far? Okay, sorry, for now, I'm not uh, looking at chat. So anyone, if you have any question, please uh, raise uh, now. Or do you see the uh, speed, uh, the way I'm talking, the things I'm talking about? So any doubt, do you see I'm too, going too fast or do you, do you want me to go a bit slow? Any, any input, any feedback before we move further? Yeah, Mr. Sachin, this side, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so we will go for Viptela only some or some other vendor as well, just like Miraki or something else. Only Viptela. Uh, okay. Do we have Miraki also in course? Uh, you need to check with the, the support team. Okay. Viptela looks like, what does Miraki looks like? Okay. Yes. So this is what I can uh, give you from my side. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the main uh, concept, the background behind adding the software technologies or more of the software part into networking is to separate different planes which are there in networking in the existing networks like control plane, data plane and management plane. So I'll tell you in detail the difference between these three planes. So what as event? Hello, Amit. Uh, 
uh, I think you are speaking, but uh, yeah, your Amit, voice yeah, yeah, actually, Amit, your voice is kind of like uh, uh, losing me in between. Yes, Amit, like we are like I am like feeling like I am losing like losing your voice actually. Yeah. Okay, so is it happening with everyone or? Yeah, this is like uh, everyone. Uh, everyone. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And I can see only welcome to SD1 training page. Like if you are sharing something, yes. like yeah, yeah, we haven't um, moved ahead yet. It's on the welcome page only. But in between your voice is going voice is breaking. Uh, yeah. Let me yeah. let me switch my internet connection. Just a moment. Uh, and second thing, Amit, I just would like to know that uh, could you please mm -hmm. share the uh, course content what we are going to sure, talk? sure, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Let me switch my internet connection. Housekeeping money there. Hi again. So, am I audible now? Yes. Okay. Is it better or still same? I mean, yes, it's better now. Okay. Thanks. So, okay. So, I'll be sharing the course content as well. And previously, uh, we are still on the welcome page. Okay. So, I'll share once again. Okay. So please let me know if anyone uh, can't see my screen, I would say. So it's a welcome page still only. Okay. So we were talking about SD-WAN. So SD-WAN, it stems from SDN. What SDN is, it is software defined networking that we will try to implement most of the networking features using softwares. Okay, because see, in, even in the existing networking, most of the features, they are inbuilt into software, right? Because when you talk about Cisco routers, on Cisco routers, we have iOS installed, okay? Using iOS installed, the software image that we install on the router, so let's say routing protocols, right? Forwarding of traffic, access lists, everything is embedded into software, right? When we will discuss how it is different from from the SD WAN, how things are different in SD WAN, right? So the main concept of SDN, software defined networking, is to separate different planes. Like I said before, control plane, data plane, and management plane. Okay. So when I say control plane, so control plane, very simple example of control plane is routing. Only routing protocols. Routing protocols they always work on the top of control plane okay and how about data plane data plane is actual forwarding of packets actual forwarding of data so whatever we are accessing let's say if we are accessing teams right or we are let's say having this webex meeting so whatever data that we are exchanging that like i'm talking sharing file or sharing my screen so this is actual forwarding of data it is part of data plane and 
let's talk about now management plane so management plane is management of devices like you do telnet to the devices you do ssh right so those sort of things that we do to manage the device they are part of management plane so in existing networking on routers let's say these three planes they are not separated right so we are managing the routing itself on the device we configure routing protocols static routing we configure on same device as the device on which we will perform the forwarding of the packets right and management plane is also unified so all these three planes are unified now with sdn we separate these three planes now what is the advantage that we have by separating these three planes just a moment Yeah, sorry, I'm back. So we were talking about uh, the SDN. So SD-WAN, SD-LAN, they all stem from SDN, where we are separating three different planes, control plane, management plane, and data plane, right? So by separating these three planes, what we are trying to achieve is to reduce the overhead of the end devices. Like in existing networking, if we have a router on the site, so that need higher CPU, higher capacity to handle all these three planes, control plane, data plane, and management plane. I'll switch over to the paint screen to help you understand these three different, I'll write down, okay? I'll share my screen again, pain screen, because previously I was only sharing the PowerPoint. Okay. So please let me know in case anyone uh, can see my screen. Yes. Okay, good, thanks. So let me try to collapse this. Okay. So we have uh, SDN, which is uh, software defined networking. Okay, so part of SDN, there are majorly two, three, uh, I would say, child uh, branches which I can create. One is SDN. One is SD-LAN and other is ACI, if you have heard of application-centric infrastructure. So SD-WAN is mainly for WAN, wide area network. SD-LAN, as its name shows, is only for LAN. ACI is specific to data centers. Okay, so what is the concept of SDN? It's, it's applicable for SD-WAN, SD-LAN, and ACI. The separation of different planes, like control plane, data plane, and then management plane. Okay, so for example, in legacy network or a smaller network, let's say we have a cloud. I'm drawing this cloud or further down the, uh, we, the sessions that we will have. So. You will see this uh, icon as a signal of the cloud, which could be a backbone uh, network of any ISP, be it Airtel, Tata, okay? And the circle I would draw down as roughly representing the edge device. Uh, it could be router, it could be SD-WAN device, or because you might have heard of now these, these days, Cisco routers are also uh, extensively used uh, for SD-WAN devices. So a Cisco router, can act as legacy router or we can transform that device into SD-WAN device. 
okay so there is one command we will see how we can do that okay so i was going to this traditional uh, networking let's say here we have c routers or edge devices mostly edge devices when i say in sd wan so they are synonymous to the c routers or the routers across the enterprise for example i took example of uh, very simple example i would say when we are sitting in office we must be having sort of two three four van routers which would be carrying our traffic whichever we will be working on our office applications or whatever we do sitting on your computer so your traffic must be crossing these van routers right so in very basic example let's say this is your pc user machine which is sitting in office they would be somehow be connecting to some switch okay there could be multiple switches there could be one switch mostly right so mostly you will see uh, more than one switches for redundancy purpose for scalability to cater multiple users right so those switches would somehow be connected to the c routers okay so this is the usual setup where in this network this is called as uh, lan across the LAN network you may see uh, your wireless APs firewalls let's say or load balancers uh, web servers hosted so these sort of infrastructure would be there across the LAN network and the WAN starts right from the WAN routers the edge device or C routers what we call WAN network is this one wide area network so for example, let's say if this is my site in Delhi, there would be similar setup across other sites, be it in London or be it any location. So there would be similar setup on the other sites as well, right? For example, if I copy this, you can assume this network is also there on any other location like a PC, APs, similar to whatever we have on one location, it may be same or different on the other locations as well, right? But again, on remote side, on other side, it would also be called as LAN to local to that site, okay? Now, this is our WAN network. So our SG WAN network would mostly be revolving around this setup, around this network, okay? So what we are doing now as part of SD-WAN, we are separating control data and management plane. Earlier, the our traditional routers, they handle all sort of routing, forwarding of packets, management plane onto same device. But with SD-WAN, what happens with SD-WAN? We are separating, I'm, I'm drawing this line to separate SD-WAN network to show you how it looks like. There is one thing called as EMS in SD-WAN, uh, sorry, element management system it has uh, very basic on basic level three components which are mainly managing the whole network out of these these three components there is one component which would be handling routing only routing this component would be handling be it there is a one device two device or 5000 devices for all WAN devices, these are the circles that I have drawn. They are equivalent to this edge C router. For these routers or edge devices on left hand side, so left hand side, I am drawing the a very basic high level view of the SD WAN network, how it looks like. So for these edge devices, there is one component called as vSmart. It handles all sort of routing there would not be any sort of routing directly between the end devices they won't be talking via routing protocols they don't communicate to each other on routing protocols so for routing protocols these edge devices they would only be talking to vsmart so they are part of control plane any question so far So the EMS is fall under the control plane, data plane and management plane, right? So EMS is part of control plane and management plane. Okay. Data plane are the end devices. This is data plane and devices. For example, this device I said, vSmart, it is part of control plane. Another component we manage that is management plane. 
so we smart to like only play the role of the routing protocol they are it is only handle the routing protocol absolutely okay v smart solely uses routing plane it is solely managing the control plane on very basic level routing is one of the example we will see there are many more things which v smart handles but again those fall under control plane only nothing about data plane nothing about management plane everything okay. of control plane okay thank you you welcome anyone any question any doubt about this control plane data plane uh, my question is, is uh, uh, who's handling the configuration uh, part uh, control plane or management plane so configuration see it is a mix of management plane and control plane why i am saying this because it depends configuration is very broader term right so it depends if you want to configure v smart itself itself right or if you want to configure edge devices right so for us management plane is all sort of management thing that we are trying to do even management is configuring control plane for day zero very first even let's say we have powered on v smart okay on day zero day one we have just bought v smart we have powered it on and now who will configure this v smart from management plane which is a component called as v manage so management plane is managing everything the con even the configuration of v smart this is my v smart this is my v manage which is management plane so v manage does everything we do everything on v manage and that is cascaded on to v smart even for the routing thing whatever routing or control plane thing that we want to do we will write on v manage that would be pushed over to v smart okay so it's a v smart is a part of a v manage right so okay. these three components they work with each other they have permanent tunnels connected to each other dtls secure tunnel they have tunnels established between each other they can talk to each other whenever needed okay over secure path and v manage or management plane is everything on management plane we do everything we manage devices from management plane management plane has dashboard if you have worked on like solar winds or any man, any tool like info vista any tool wherever you can see utilization graph of the network from wherever you can push the configuration you can see the status of the devices so management plane is everything so it's kinds of server like where we can do the yes. changes and so that the same same will be get replicated into v service uh, smart absolutely right and what about the third poor part portion yeah we will we will talk about it yes yeah. okay, okay. So firstly, what we where we were where we started was to how to show you like how they synchronize how they are synonym to each other like as devices on left hand side into the SD WAN network they are solely carrying the task of forwarding the data to each other. They are not aware about what routing protocol. Let's say other device could be running OSPF. This device could be running BGP towards the LAN on this segment. On one side, it could be BGP, other side could be OSPF. But over the WAN network, they are not concerned about it. Just a moment. Okay. So over the WAN network, these edge devices are now we can have edge devices which has which they have lesser capacity in terms of cpu in terms of ram because they need not now concerned about routing protocols okay they need not calculate the best route or any changes in the routing tables whatsoever is the overhead of the routing plane of the routing protocols right that is now reduced because vSmart is a separate device which solely handles this part. It only sends the best routes to the end devices. Okay. So this is the, I would say, one of the advantage that we have with the um, SD WAN that the there are different planes which are separated like control plane, data plane, and management plane. These three functionalities they were mainly invented 
under SDN umbrella, software defined networking. This is the key advantage, key feature with SDN. Okay. Now, one of the thing that we just talked about separation of the planes, other advantage that we have SD WAN is security. Okay. Security. So all devices, they are secured as part of their one common fabric. When all these SD WAN devices, when they are part of one common secure plane, then only these devices would be able to start talking to each other. In case they have different security parameters, security features, we will talk about how they are, but there would be one common security parameter, which is uh, in very common terms is certificate. When all these devices would have one common certificate, then only these devices can start talking to each other. Right? So certificate is one key thing that each device must have certificate in advance before they will start talking to each other. Once they have certificates, they will build up TLS or which is the SSL based tunnel, TLS or DTLS tunnel between them. All these devices would form secure tunnels between them where certificate is the key thing. Once these all devices would have certificate, then only they would be able to start building tunnel with each other. In case they have mismatch in certificate, they won't be able to establish tunnel between each other. And these two devices, once let's say there are two devices, their certificates are not matching, then these two devices would be considered as they are not part of same network. They are something different. It could be hacker. It could be anything. It could be a malicious device, but that tunnel would not come up and they won't be able to talk to each other. So our network would remain secure. So security is key thing. The important thing with SDN, which is uh, SD or SDN or SDN, it is called as ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Authority. So Zero Trust Network. So when we plug on our devices, if we plug on internet lines or let's say MPLS line, even if they have IP reachability, even if we can ping to each other, but still they won't be able to form tunnel between each other, the dynamic tunnel, the secure tunnel, which is established everywhere within the sd wan network, that tunnel would not be established. Okay, so this is called as zero trust network. So how this zero trust is gained, how we go beyond this zero trust network, how we make them trustable using certificates. Every device has certificates which carries keys, which are basically used to hash the data. So once they have trusted keys, like we have pre-shared key in IPsec, so sort of same thing, but with added security, once they have same security keys, then only they would be able to build tunnel between each other and then only sd wan communication will start. We will go in deeper, what are these certificates, how they look like, what are the keys, how they are used, we will see everything, okay? So this is the, what I'm talking about is the advantage that we have with sd wan that it is secure and we have separated control plane and data plane, right? Another key advantage we have with sd wan is like in traditional networking, if we have, let's say, multiple WAN links, let's say we have, here, three WAN links. This is my, let's say, gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0. There are other interfaces, let's say, gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 and gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 2. Can anyone tell me, out of these three links in traditional networking on a traditional WAN router, out of these three links, which link would be used to carry the data by default? Can someone tell me, please? Zero slash zero. Okay. So again, by default, it depends what routing protocol we are running, how routing is set up. It may be load shared across all the three all the three links, but that load sharing is not that much optimal. Okay. And in most of the usual scenarios, you will see one of the link being used for all the traffic. Okay. Now with SD WAN. The advantage that we have is in case we have multiple WAN links, they would be load sharing by default across WAN links. All the WAN links would be used. 
right? So in SD WAN, we can couple different WAN links. Let's say MPLS, internet. Hello. It's yes, like the channel it is working on. Sorry, you are breaking up. Uh, I'm not sure if it is me or. It is working like. Like with the channel, the three links are working at a time. Yes. So telling like. Yes, you can say it like it's same as Ether channel, but with added security, lot more features added. Uh, but you can say it like Ether channel, but there again there are few things related like uh, load sharing uh, algorithm, right? In port channel also there is kind of hashing that which traffic uh, which flows would be sent over which link. We will talk about it as well in detail right so on high level we can load here by default on all the available links or on specific links we can couple different van transports like mpls link internet link and lte wireless link so if anyone is not clear about this difference what is different between mpls and internet we will discuss this about as well in detail okay for now you can assume it like these are three different types of link MPLS, internet and LTE, let's say wireless. In legacy networking, uh, when there are diverse transports, like one is MPLS, other is internet, third is LTE. So we cannot really club them in legacy networking. This is one of the, uh, I would say limitation with traditional networking, okay? So we can club these three different WAN links in SD-WAN. Also, in traditional networking, in case one of the link is having packet drops, there is no clear way to switch traffic onto the other links. Just like very simple example, st starting of this call, you are seeing me, my voice breaking up, right? There is no real way to automatically switch to the other path in traditional networking, but in SD-WAN we do have. We can say state different parameters of packet drops, latency, jitter, etc. When let's say packet drop goes then more than 1%, it would automatically switch traffic onto the best performing line. This is the another advantage that we have with SD-WAN, okay? Also, in SD-WAN, we can steer the traffic based on the application. Let's say, we can say, my team's traffic should go via gigabit 0 slash 0, and my WebEx traffic should go via gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1. We need not define the IP address of the application. It would, by default, identify the application based on the IP address or port number or signatures. They are inbuilt into codes of the SD WANs, right? They can identify the application based on the whatever has been embedded into the code. Okay, so this is another advantage that we can steer the traffic based on the application, right? So again, coming back onto this SD WAN thing, SD WAN is software defined networking. There are many different vendors which are providing SD WAN services. Very first one we will be discussing throughout is the Viptela. It is also called as Cisco SD-WAN. Why two names? Because earlier Viptela was the original company who invented this Cisco SD-WAN. But later Cisco took it over and renamed it as Cisco SD-WAN. Okay. For Viptela, there were proprietary hardware V edges. We call them as V edge. Is the generic name of the router. Okay. When we say VH, it is generic name for router. But VH is the Viptela specific hardware. It has command lines a bit different from Cisco. Like we have Juniper routers, we have HP or Huawei routers. There are different vendors. So you can consider VH also appear to the router, but VH is mainly for SD-WAN services. Okay. We can do few of the traditional routing thing with VH. But VH is mainly for SD WAN. There are different models of VH. Let's say based on the capacity, number of ports, let's say VH 100 or let's say VH 1000. So again, there, there are different models who are supporting different capabilities, like they have different memory or different all sorts of things. They can handle different number of devices, different number of routes, packets, etc. So Viptela V edge are the Viptela proprietary hardware and Cisco SD WAN. When we say Cisco, initially only SD WAN was supported on V edges, Viptela proprietary hardware, but later Cisco modified their image. Now 
I, I SD-WAN is supported on Cisco routers as well. Like Cisco ISR 4000 routers, 1000 routers, ASR routers. So there are many devices. Okay. Similarly, as we have Viptela SD-WAN, there are other flavors like Meraki. There, there, this is another example of SD-WAN provider. Um, we have uh, Silver Peak. We have VeloCloud. There are many other vendors, but again, for all of them, the concept is same. The separation of different planes. Okay. They also have secure path between all the sites. Any question? Uh, my question is, uh, uh, VH is the part of data plane? Yes. Okay. So these, the, on left hand side, these are all examples of VH. Okay. okay. Let me clean it up a bit. So edge devices only take care of data plane. So these Cisco routers that I'm talking about, they would also be part of data plane only. The only difference is these VHs we cannot use as traditional router. But on Cisco routers, there is one command to toggle the mode that if it would be acting as SD-WAN device, edge device, or it would be acting as legacy router. Okay. Viptela is mainly for the large networks where we have uh, any customer which has large number of sites, say more than 50, 100 sites. And Meraki is for small scale sites like insurance companies, Reliance Insurance or Tata Capital, sort of those organizations where there are less number of users, where less number of features are needed. We don't want policy based routing. We don't want this application steering that application identification and steering on the best performing line, sort of those features. And for those advanced features, SD-WAN, Viptela is there. Meraki is also owned by Cisco. Okay. So other vendors also, they are also secure. Now with the advantage with Cisco is that the customer whosoever, they are, if already they are having Cisco routers like ISR 4000, 1000 or ASR routers, their devices would not be waste. They can simply upgrade the code and they can simply upgrade the iOS image and they can run SD-WAN. Okay. Now, these components of EMS, we manage vSmart and third component is vBond. We will discuss in detail functioning of each of these three components. They are all these all three components. They are always virtual. When I say virtual, we need to create a virtual machine on a bare metal server. We just need to buy a server. We need to create a virtual machine. Just like as very simple example on laptops, sometimes you might have seen people running two operating systems like Windows and Linux, right? Same is the case for these three, vBond, vSmart and vManage. All these three components, they are always virtual. You cannot go to any vendor. Sorry, if I say about Viptela Steven, you cannot go to Cisco and say, I want to buy vManage hardware or I want to buy vSmart hardware. These are always virtual. They would always be spinning up on virtual machines. Just like as in GNS or packet tracer, what you do, you create a virtual machine of router and you install the image of the router, right? Same would be the case with these three components. They would always be virtual, but spinned up on a, let's say, bare metal server. There is no specific Cisco router which says that yes, we bond and we manage. We smart they would be supported on router. Okay. Any question? So we bond, we smart, and uh, we manage that all we uh, that that all uh, can be installed on the single server. Yes. Okay. On single server, on multiple servers. For redundancy purpose also, we can have multiple we bonds, multiple we manage machines, and multiple we smarts. So uh, it means like the routing protocol which will be running in the V smart that mm -hmm. can we we will be doing in the routers or that particular server. Yes, on okay. server there would be three different virtual machines. Let's say this box that I have drawn. Let's say this is one physical server. On mm -hmm. this we have configured three virtual machines, right? Okay. They would be although they would be having the connectivity via let's say backend on virtual part. But still, their SD-WAN communication would be via their secure tunnels only. Okay, getting my point? Yes, 
you say all CE routers routing protocols will be uh, available in uh, vSmart. Also. vSmart. Yes. So vSmart would be carrying all sort of routing information. Whatever are the LAN subnets on each side, they would be transported onto vSmart. vSmart would carry, vSmart would manage that routing information. It would cascade it to other sites, similar to DMVPN. Okay. So, Mith, how are we avoiding, uh, uh, since everything is managed by vManage, how are we avoiding that single point of failure? So, but, mm -hmm. now, just, what okay. vManage does, sorry, what vManage does is, we manage itself has nothing. And I would say in other words, it has everything, right? So once we manage whatever is doing, let's say we manage cascaded the information to vSmart, vSmart cascaded to other devices. Let's suppose we are in a state where these three devices are talking to each other, right? Hmm. Now, once they are talking to each other, they don't need any of these because they have all information what is needed to talk to each other what these edge devices need for we manage what is the need of we manage and we smart is for progressive updates even if we manage and we smart is not reachable then also these three devices would keep talking to each other for certain period of time that we can extend up to seven days so in other words we manage and we smart if they are not available for seven days these three devices would still be talking to each other as long as they are up and active on if we manage is not reachable we manage is not available management things won't be available like you won't be able to log into these edge devices you won't be able to capture the utilization or other statistics we smart won't be able to provide the updates of, about the routing information these three devices would keep talking to each other using stale information let's say like uh, uh, mm -hmm. from we manage we enforce the policies from uh, to like uh, vSmart and in case like uh, vSmart got failed mm -hmm. so how the router would be co like uh, communicating with each, each other with stale information because whatever is the best routing information which is sent from vSmart to the edge devices that is captured on the edge devices itself that is saved on the edge devices okay and that so is from... refreshed up, uh, on on regular period Okay, so from the vManage, we are enforcing policies from the vSmart and yes. vSmart is enforcing for installing that policy into, yes. into the edge devices. Yes, absolutely. Until unless we do any like a new, new, until unless we implement any new policy. Yes. So that, that, were, that in that case, that will be sync. Yes. Okay. And Amit, mm -hmm. in legacy network, uh, all the routers, does, uh, does the have, have the independent routing protocols, they know how yes. to talk to each other. And they know what is the best path and all the yes. communication sort of things. So where, why do we need uh, again separate we manage, we uh, we bond and we uh, we smart all the things when the routers are having independent capability to talk to each other. So In secure way, secure way. So they are. Uh, let me. Uh, is it okay if I clean up all this, or do you need yes, anything yes. to be retained? Okay. Only we bond is left, no? We bond yes, yes. Bond. yes, yes. We will discuss in detail about each of the component. Okay. So, for example, let's say this is my EMS, which has three components. As I said, we bond, we manage, and we smart. We, whenever you see any component starting with small p, v, that means Viptela. So it was invented by Viptela. Okay. V is stand for Viptela. V smart and this is V bond. Now, let's say as you said that these three devices, whenever we talk about these three devices, there would be some LAN subnets behind these devices, right? Anyone? Any doubt on this? So no. There is no way to let exchange this these subnets directly to each other. This 10 slash 24, it would be cascaded to vSmart. vSmart would further send it down towards the other side. Now, there is no direct way to send this 10 subnet to 20 to the other side. There is no direct way available. Okay. So, this 10 slash 24 would be advertised via vSmart to the other side. Similarly, 
20 subnet would be re-advertised back to first site. Once they have routes available, then only they can send data to each other. In case route is not available, they won't be able to send the packets to each other. Does that clarify your question? Need of vSmart? No, no, no. correct. But now the purpose of vSmart is to share the uh, yes. routing, handle the routing process of each routing process of each router. So what I my yes. question is, when these uh, routers can individually uh, have the routing uh, routing routing tables of routing information of other other routers, mm -hmm. so how the routing uh, pro protocol is established as usual, OSPF or BGP. Mm -hmm. So they can have a route, routes of each other routers. So, so what it, is the uh, understand uh, again? Yeah, again need of point. Smart. You mean when they can run routing protocol between each other, then why vSmart is needed, right? Yes, 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 yes. How many routers you can run OSPF with on a scalability purpose? How many users? Let's say you have two thousand routers. How many engineers you need to manage OSPF for two thousand routers? Um, that is depends. Yes. So this is the advantage. You can have 2000 routers, you can have 4000 routers, but you can still have one or two vSmarts to manage all these scalability routers. Do you follow my point? If there are, let's say, large number of routers, then there is problem, right? Yes. This is the advantage with sd that this is scalable. That with traditional network, as number of devices grow, and also when number of devices are growing, when there are 2000 routers, right? We need more manpower to handle these routers. Also, the capacity of these devices, that would also increase, right? If you talk about this yes. internet routing table, public internet routing table, that has more than 9 lakhs routes now. So as number of devices, number of sites would grow, number of routes would increase, so would be the hardware capacity of these devices, right? Okay. So to reduce the overhead of the end devices and to reduce the overhead of the resources. You are simply sitting on vManage. You are writing the configuration for remote devices. That configuration would be pushed on to vSmart. vSmart would act as you want remotely. You need not log into each of the device. It would send all these updates remotely over secure path. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, okay, good. So anyone, anyone, any question? Um, yes, Amit, can we have yeah. two set of uh, we manage and uh, this, like we have two servers? Yes, we so can have more can, than one. We can have more than one managing the same set of devices. Yes. Okay. Okay, so for example, let's say we have another vSmart. For redundancy purpose, we have two vSmarts. There would be secure tunnel established between two vSmarts as well. They would be in sync to each other. And if you want, you can configure vSmart to manage only one device, which is in one region. You can say v, one vSmart is for APAC region, other vSmart is for America region, and they are backing up each other as well. Like one-to-one -one correspondence and they are back up to each other as well. Make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, welcome. So I would say this is uh, this is this about the today's session, right? So we will uh, continue from here on the next session, uh, maybe uh, next weekend, Saturday. So if you have any questions so far, you can ask me. Maybe anything. Oh, sorry, uh, somebody asked about the uh, course content. Let me share that. I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. SD WAN fundamentals, uh, how to deploy SD WAN, like how to deploy end devices, how to establish channels between them, environment, ZTP, zero touch provisioning, we will talk about it. It is basically sending a router to the device. Let's say what happens for your home network. Whenever you are buying a modem, you are subscribing internet connection, what happens? You got, you get a modem, you, you get internet line, there is one engineer, right? Maybe you are lineman or someone who is coming on to your home, configuring your broadband router, right? What if you get a modem delivered to your home, just connect internet line and your network is through? Have you ever imagined? Is this possible? With zero touch provisioning, it is possible. 
only hardware would be delivered onto the site. Any non-technical person, anyone on the site, just connect the internet line onto the device. Within few minutes, this device would go, li go live. You just need to connect the LAN cable and you are connected to your network, just like as you connect to your router. So this is the zero touch provisioning. We will talk about it. Configure SD-WAN policies. As we talked about vSmart and control plane, using policies, very simple example is we can create different topologies like hub and spoke, full mesh, partial mesh, or customized topology that we can do here, right? So operating SD-WAN devices, what are the different commands, what we can do, how we upgrade iOS, right? And troubleshooting, okay? So there are basically two modes like basics and advanced we will do both okay as part of basics there are sd -WAN fundamental controllers installation like how we install uh, vsmart vmanage and vbond so ems or when i say controller or ems they are same to each other right whenever i say controller meaning ems whenever i say controller i mean a one conclusive name for vbond vsmart and vmanage okay sd when VH cloud, meaning when we are spinning, when we are configuring VH on cloud, be it AWS, be it GCP, that we are not having a physical hardware, but rather we are configuring our edge device on cloud. That also we can do. sd when ZTP and PNP. PNP is plug and play. ZTP is zero touch provisioning. Both are same. ZTP is for Viptela proprietary hardware. PNP is for Cisco routers. Okay, then introduction to web interface of vManage from where we can see status of devices, how many devices are up, what is utilization, what are the, everything that you do on CLI on end devices, you can see remotely from web interface. Okay, certificates, how we can use certificates for security, serial number file, validate, we will see all these things. Templates that how we can configure remotely end devices. We can do whole configuration remotely of the end devices. We need not go log into each and every device. We can simply perform configuration, new configuration as well as changes. Okay, different protocols, AAA. So under sd one Advance, it comes uh, local policies, multiple WAN links, TLOC extension, we will see ACLs, Firewall, how we can use security with sd -WAN. application aware routing, QoS, segmentation, and NAT. Okay, this was about the, uh, this is about the course content. Okay, Amit, my question is, uh, what are the prerequisites for people learning to start uh, sd -WAN? Routing. It's the routing? Yes. Okay, and uh, it's a basic knowledge of CCNA, am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean, our batch will be like only Saturday, Sunday or only yes. Saturday? Yes, Saturday, Sunday. So tomorrow again we will have session at the same time? Tomorrow I am not aware if we have session, but uh, as much I know, it's about uh, next Saturday. Okay. And Amit, uh, what do we have for hands-on? Like, do we have any labs available? Yes, like, yes, yes. We have exclusive lab available for each mm -hmm. one of you. So it would be a blank lab for you, whatever I am doing on the lab. So you need to do it by yourself after the class. Okay. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, you are also conducting like uh, regular batches. Yes. At what time? So for that, you need to check with the admin team, right? Because there are multiple batches going on. So it depends uh, on availability. So you can check with the administration team. Okay. Sure. And what's the duration of this weekend batch? Two hours. So, mostly uh, it is ten to twelve, and uh, mostly it uh, it completes in uh, one and a half month. Okay. Six weekends, yes. So it, it it again depends on the pace as well, how things are going with everyone, right? So it's not hard and fast that it would be finished by one and a half, but mostly it is done by this time. Yeah, fine. Okay. And the uh, labs are uh, available, like we can anytime log in into the portal. Yes, yes, absolutely. Them. Even after the class as well. Like when class is finished in one and a half month, even after that, you have lab access. So every day it's around 
10 or it's on 11. So today we have session, uh, we have session at 11 to 12, right? But mostly I had batches which the, where the timings were 10 to 12, but I would say it, it depends upon the, uh, uh, you know, mutual uh, like, so whatever time is suitable for everyone. Yeah, it would be good if we could start from 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I have a batch in the evening also for mm -hmm. NRC. Okay. okay. The better is from 10 to 12. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Any question? Yeah, nothing from my side. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Nothing from my end. Thank you, Amit. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Okay, then. If no more questions, then let's uh, conclude it for today. Right? Thanks, yeah. everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thanks. you. It was nice Thank meeting you all. You. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah. yeah. Good day. Bye. Yeah.